everyone, it's another great day here at Lifehouse Kids. My name is Jasmine and I'm so excited that you are here with us as we continue to focus on our life app of faith. Faith is trusting in what we can't see because of what we can see. It's kind of like the wind. We see what the wind does. We see the branches on the tree moving and things being blown around. We can sometimes even hear the wind, but we cannot see it. We know it's there because of what it does. It's kind of like the secret decoder I have here. I know it has a message, but I just can't see the message. I have to figure out what it says. There are a lot of numbers. I have to decode it with the special decoder. You know, I have a great idea. You can help me figure out the code. All right, here's what I'm going to do. On the screen, you will see a wheel with the alphabet. That is the decoder. Each letter has a number assigned to it. You will then be able to decode the series of numbers using the decoder. All you will need is a paper, pencil, or a pen, and your eyes, and maybe your brother or sister or a grown-up to help you solve the message. Feel free to hit the pause button if you need more time. Ready? Here we go. Let's get ready to decode this message. Awesome job, everyone. Instead of a bunch of numbers, you saw this month's memory verse. Feel free to decorate your memory verse. You could hang it somewhere in your home to help you memorize the verse. This month's memory verse says, Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11, 1. Since you decoded the secret message, let's all read it together. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11, 1. Great job, everyone. In today's story, we will learn about a man named Saul and his encounter with Jesus. As soon as he met Jesus, he changed how he saw everything. But before we get into that, let's all stand up and get ready to worship God together.
everybody, I'm Erica, and welcome to my summer STEAM lab! Today, I'm challenging myself to some optical illusions. <laughs> Dizzy yet? And you know what these tricky little eye puzzles require? A whole lot of faith! Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. So, let's give it a go! Whoa! That is wild! Wanna see? Does it look like the circles are moving? But they aren't! It's a still photo! The way the gray and the black and the white are used makes it look like it's moving! <laughs> Crazy, right? Do I look like I'm moving? Now, this one is easy. Okay, which of these objects is bigger than the other? Object A. Duh. All right. Wait. Object A. Right? Wait a second. Wait a second. They're, they're, the, they're the same size. I'm so shocked right now. I'm so shocked right now! Okay, sometimes what we think we see is not what's real. And when we discover the truth, it can be shocking. <gasps> huh. Today's story is all about a guy named Saul who thought he knew it was true, but he was in for a big shock. Let's check it out. <laughs> The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts. Chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. If anyone was set up for the good life, it was Saul of Tarsus. Greetings. Though Saul's family was Jewish, he was also born a Roman citizen. Throughout his life, he was known by two different names. You may call me Saul or Paul. As a young man, Saul was sent to Jerusalem to study with the famous Rabbi Gamaliel. Let's see. You have achieved 100% in classical literature, 111% in philosophy, and in ethics, 99%. Oh, oh, I vow to do better. Saul became a Pharisee like his father before him. He carefully studied God's law and prayed three times a day. Dear God, help me follow your laws 100% perfectly. Like the other religious leaders in Jerusalem, though, Saul was caught off guard by the events that surrounded the life and death of Jesus. Good riddance. Now that fool can't try to overturn God's laws anymore. Haven't you heard? Jesus' followers says he's returned to life. They've seen Jesus? They've seen Jesus. <laughs> Ah, oh, those riffraff will slink away soon enough. Against all odds, the followers of Jesus didn't fade away. In fact, the numbers began to grow. Five thousand? You're telling me that five thousand people are following the way of a dead man? Well, technically, they think he's alive. Uh, not helping. The religious leaders in Jerusalem did everything they could to squash the new movement. They even arrested a leader among the Jesus followers named Stephen. After telling lies about him, they dragged him outside the city. This man is a disgrace. Saul stood by and held the coats of the men who picked up stones and threw them at Stephen until they killed him. If Stephen had just let go of this Jesus nonsense, he wouldn't have had to die. It's terrible. I heard people are following the way of Jesus in other cities too. What? Inconceivable! Saul quickly became known for hunting down people who believed in Jesus. When he discovered that some Jews in Damascus were following Jesus, he went straight to the high priest. 
Ah, this Jesus thing is spreading everywhere. I'm aware. They think he's alive. Hashtag, yup. Someone should do something. I hope you have something constructive to say. Give me letters to the synagogues in Damascus so I can arrest all the believers and bring them back here. Now you're talking. Saul set off for Damascus with the blessing of the high priest. He traveled with a group of men to arrest the believers they found. After days on the road, they neared the city. There it is. We'll make it by lunch. No, we must take time to pray. As he did three times every day, Saul stopped and turned to Jerusalem to pray. Certain God was on his side. Dear Lord, help me to catch every single one of those despicable Jesus people. Suddenly, a light more brilliant than the midday sun blazed down around Saul. He staggered, fell to the ground, squeezing his eyes shut against the glare. Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Saul gasped. It felt as though the whole earth shifted beneath him. Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I am the one you are opposing. The men around Saul stared in horror and confusion, unable to speak. They could see no one, but heard a sound, perhaps like a roar of thunder. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. Saul reeled. He struggled to his feet and finally opened his eyes. He saw nothing, only darkness. What, what's happened? You tell us. We saw the light and you fell and this sound and then you said- I can't see. What? I can't see. I've been blinded. Uh, that's not good. Here, take my hand. Saul grasped the man's hand and shuffled a few steps forward. Who are you talking to? I, I think, I think it was Jesus. You heard Jesus? I heard Jesus. Saul's companions led him into Damascus, where he stayed at the home of a man named Judas on Straight Street. Uh, want something to eat? I'm not hungry. Or water? Not thirsty. For three days, Saul wrestled with himself and God. He'd come face to face with the very man he knew was dead, but discovered that Jesus was very much alive. Now blind, Saul was forced to see everything in a brand new light. Okay, there's supposedly a picture of a dinosaur hidden in this image. I don't, focus, 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 focus! Okay. I'll just have to have faith that there's a dinosaur in this picture because I do not see it. Speaking of, Saul literally couldn't see after his encounter with Jesus, but in a way, he could see better than he ever had before. Anyway, Saul saw everything. And Jesus made a way for everybody to be saved from their sins. After Jesus went back to heaven, he gave his followers the Holy Spirit and then many more people believed in Jesus too. Saul wanted to stop the Jesus followers, and he really tried, <laughs> but Jesus wanted Saul to know a better way. You know, it's amazing how God has revealed himself to people all throughout history. Saul, who is also known as Paul, so Saul and Paul are actually Saul Paul, was no exception, and neither are you, just like God opened Saul's eyes to see the truth, he can open our eyes too. He may not appear to you in a bright light, but God can get your attention in all kinds of ways, like through nature, <sighs> or a conversation with a friend. That's really good, I like that, you're so wise. A song on the radio. God can even use your own circumstances to help you know him. And when you focus in and really see Jesus for who he is, the savior of the world, it can change how you see everything. So that's the one thing to remember today. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see everything. It's like Jesus gives us brand new glasses to see out of. I can't really see out of these ones, but um, it's a different way to see. So that's exciting. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Well, that's all I got for this week. Oh, perfect. 
These coffee beans want to wave goodbye to you. If you think about it, God has been helping people see him all throughout history. From the very beginning, he's been helping people see the world in a new way. A new way that will allow us to make the wise choice. A way that will help us treat others the way we want to be treated. He's been helping people understand who he is and what his purpose is for our lives. Let's remember this. Knowing Jesus changes the way we see everything. When we put our faith in Jesus, it changes everything. We'll see people as God sees them. We'll discover a personal mission to join God in his rescue plan for the world. Jesus really lived and died and rose again. Believing in that impacts our entire life. Everything that Saul thought he knew about Jesus that day, he would never be the same. Let us close our eyes and bow our heads and ask God to help us in the same way. Let's pray. Dear God, it's amazing how you completely changed Saul's life. After you met him there on the road, he was never the same. You do the same thing for us too. When we put our faith in you, you transform us from the inside. You make us want to love others instead of just living for ourselves. You change the way we see everything. Please help us to see your way as we live every day. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And that's it, everyone. Be sure to click the link for activities to help you throughout the week. Don't forget to click the subscribe button to follow and to get the most up-to-date midweek devotionals and Sunday's online experience. And on behalf of Lifehouse Kids team, we miss you, we love you, and we hope to see you all real soon. God bless.